Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video. Long time no see. Today we are using some products from the Rabbit Hole Designs. I am using the Hello with Shadow, um, the Lovely Lilies, which is my illustrated set, and then the Garden Trellis Stencil. Uh, here, technology was not kind to me, <laughs> and I actually had to go back and uh, refilm that intro. I don't know what happened, but it cut off like the first part of my video. Um, and so here I'm stamping in Intensify Black Ink from Hero Arts because it is safe for alcohol markers. And this is a, what am I, five and a half by eight and a half inch sheet um, that I am just filling up with these images because I'm going to do a card design with two corner pieces. Um, so before I get too far into the video, I did want to mention um, that the rabbit hole is actually having 30% off their stencils. There's no code needed. It just gets um, taken off at, once you put it into the cart and that runs through June 12th. And so here, the whole point of the video is I, these lilies, obviously, you, you guys know if you watch my channel that they're my illustration and um, they can be any kind of lilies that you want. And one of the um, well, two of the more popular lilies I think that we see more often are stargazer lilies and oriental lilies. And both of those have colors that fade to white in the lily, which can be very challenging to color. And so I kind of wanted to just do a card where I concentrated on those two. Um, and so I'm using my sketch markers. If you don't have sketch markers and you do have Copics, this would be comparative to like a... Um, C or an N, like one, three, and five. Um, and we're just adding shading with the gray markers. So we're, we're laying down our shadows where two points meet, where one object lays on top of the other. So obviously um, your centers are going to be a bit darker. And then because of the way that the lilies are drawn, where they're kind of curling back, you'll also have some um, shading on your edges. This lily would be white if we put it on a colored background. I know it looks gray, um, but we're actually going to add a little bit of color ourselves. And so in order to successfully add color but still maintain our white, we're going to start with a super light yellow. This would be the oriental lily. Um, a super light yellow still maintaining a ton of that white area around the edges because the way that these grow, the yellow is really just concentrated to the center to like mid petal um, and so I go starting with my lightest color and then I'm going to work up to my darkest color and in this case I'm only using three colors here it looks good but there's not enough dimension so that's where this brighter yellow is really going to come in and kind of help us make the dimension pop so that it looks, um, you know, like those those kind of true lilies that we see in real life. And for the darkest color, I'm really, I'm not adding um, a ton at all, mostly to the base and then just a little bit extended out to the little less than mid petal. And then I'm going to go back in with those previous yellows and just go right over top of that again to make sure that that lightest color is really um, kind of blending out into the white. Um, or if you're happy with the way that they look, you can leave them just like this. I am using um, a couple of darker yellows to color the stamen. And then we're going to do the same thing with this one. This is the stargazer lily, which is, you know, typically has pink centers um, and white edges. We're going to color it the same way. You can see me putting in my shadows the same places and those lines are drawn there for you uh, to know where to add your shading to to help to make it as easy as possible for you to to get some dimension. I've said it before even when I am not the illustrator like trust the person who's drawing the image they know how they, it's meant to look and so if you see those little lines in there then follow their lead and add your shading where those lines are. Again, we are still maintaining white when we're putting down the grays. We're, we're still maintaining a good portion of like clean white cardstock. Um, we're just adding in the shadows when we're coloring things white. Um, and then so the stargazers are a bit different than the oriental. The oriental, the yellow is mostly concentrated in the center. With the stargazers, it actually goes... Um, some of them don't go all the way to the edges, but a lot of them do, where they're going to take that pink all the way to the edge. Um, and so that's what I'm doing here. Again, starting with my lightest color. This one I do end up going over twice. The, the yellow one I did not. Um, 
but I and I know it's hard to see because this pink is so such a light color but you really do need a light color to to make it blend into the white but then there I've left white on the edges so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to start building up those centers I'm still leaving my lightest color on the edge and I'm just filling in the section in the center and then so on and so forth as we go through the darker colors. Um, this color, what, what is the name of this? This is probably my favorite, my favorite pink color. Um, I don't know. Where is it? Does anybody know? My desk is such a mess. And several of you, I know you have been asking, like, where are you located? Why haven't I seen you? Oh, it's an R63, I think. Um, it's a beautiful color. But anyway, so this one is going to be much more concentrated in the, in, like, the center of the entire petal, leaving those white edges to give us that stargazer look. And then the darkest color, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the first lily, where I'm only going to add it, the shading to the base of the petal and like halfway up the petal. Um, and that, that really is just for added dimension. And then I'm going to go back over them again. Each color, there'll be um, a little bit of the lighter color left on the outer edges. We're not filling the, the whole thing in because we need to maintain those lighter edges so that it blends kind of seamlessly into the white. The other lily that you'll see in this card, I colored with these same pink colors, but I, sal I colored it as like a solid pink lily. Um, and if you wanted to see that, you could watch my other videos uh, using this set, um, which is what I did a, like a magenta pink and an orange for a tiger lily. So these really are very versatile and you could use them for a bunch of different things. And I had kept meaning to come back to using them um, because I know a lot of you purchased them, which I'm is so seriously grateful for. Um, but I wanted to come back so that way if you had purchased them, you, you had some other options for how to color your lilies besides just the two I originally showed. Um, and then we're just going to go through and we're going to do the leaves. Um, I chose some yellow greens and some teals um, for the different leaves and the swag. And um, that's, that's pretty much going to be it for the coloring. So now, several of you, God bless you, I mean, you're so wonderful, have been, have left me comments, have sent me messages, have sent me emails, because I haven't posted a video in a week. Now, two years ago, that might have been not something that would be like, hey, where's Kelly? Why hasn't she posted anything in a week? But since now, um, you know, this is my full-time job and I post pretty consistently, like three and four times a week, I'm sure you guys were like, where is she? What has happened? Um... And long story short is there isn't necessarily one like large event that has happened. It's been a series of unfortunate events, <laughs> if you will. Now you guys always hear me talk about how uh, my daughter, my little jelly bean, will just catch anything under the sun. Mm -hmm. And um, true story. Yeah, she'll catch anything under the sun. Here, now that all the coloring is done, before I do my die cutting, I am adding some little highlights to the stamen of the lilies. And then I'm going to go in with the coordinating dies and cut all of these out. Um, and then we're going to move on to the background. Um, so basically my series of unfortunate events is it started and I had to, I had to, I never watched my own videos. I had to go back and listen to my last video. That's how long it's been so that I knew at what point I had left off in my life. And do you know, in the last video, I didn't even tell you a single story about my life. We were talking about the joy of card making. I didn't tell you a single story. So I listened to myself talk for 20 minutes, which if you've ever listened to yourself talk on a recording for any amount of time, you know that you never sound like yourself and it's awful. <laughs> and it's awful. Um, I listened to myself for a full 20 minutes and got absolutely zero out of it. Didn't get a single thing. No story time, no nothing. What What the hey? Um, so here what I'm doing with the background is I wanted it to be some teals. I thought that that would be really pretty with the pinks and yellows and that the kind of yellow green that we chose. And I have sped this up quite a bit because the only reason I'm able to do this voiceover uh, with the craziness of our lives is because my sister came over here. My sister is sitting downstairs with my, <laughs> with my daughter so that I can record a 20 minute voiceover. I mean, talk about a village. I, I'm, I am very, very blessed. 
So anyway, I used all four colors um, and just did kind of a halo with a center. And now I'm going to put this Gardas Trell Garden Trellis stencil on there. And I'm going to do the same thing, except I left off the darkest color. I wanted it to kind of fade into the edges. Um, and so I started with one of my mid-tones. And then I will take this all the way into the center. So you'll really only be able to see the stenciling, um, at least in the photograph, uh, in the in the center of it, but it does go all the way to the edges, I, I promise you. And then we're going to do some perfect pearl spatters. So, um, anywho, so we had, what did we have? The first thing that happened was she got her shots. So then she didn't feel good because she got her shots. She had a fever because she had her shots. Then this past weekend, um, she had a low grade fever on Saturday and like, we just thought maybe she was teething because when she napped on Saturday, she was drooling like crazy, crazy drooling. Um, and she didn't nap great. And then Sunday she woke up and she had blisters on the side of her mouth, which I thought was like a cold sore. And Google led me astray. I Googled like toddler blisters on mouths or whatever. I know you're not supposed to do that, but I do it anyway. Um, and like everything was like cold sore, cold sore, cold sore. So I was like, how, how did she even get exposed to a cold sore? I get them, but I haven't had one in months. So I'm like, it wasn't me. I mean, I'm not sure how she would have been exposed to this. And so um, everything that we read said that she could still go to daycare with a cold sore um, as long as it wasn't you know, like it wasn't burst open kind of thing. And they, they were very tiny little blisters. Like they, it didn't even look like it was filled with anything. Um, here I'm using the press and seal. If you're not familiar with the hinge method, I got a whole video on that as well. And uh, that is how I assembled my florals here. I just thought little corner pieces would be quite fun um, to kind of fill up the card and use them a little bit differently. And so... Anyway, so we she went to daycare on Monday, but Sunday night she was up. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my word. I cannot even tell you. She was up all night. She would sleep for like maybe 20, 30 minutes and then she would wake up at one point at like 2.30 in the morning. Um, now, mind you, I had already given her Tylenol. Um, and so at 2.30 in the morning, she literally cried for 30 minutes straight. And I was like, I'm going to have to wake Eric up. We're going to have to take her to the emergency room. Like something is wrong and I don't know what's wrong with her. So like literally it was just me and her just crying in the rocking chair together. Because I was, I just felt so helpless to be able to help her. And then especially now that she's older and she's talking, like the whole time she was crying, she was just like, mommy, mommy, mommy. And it was, it was, oh, I was gutted. It was heartbreaking. So my last inch effort before waking my husband up and taking her to the emergency room was to take her downstairs, see if I could get her to like drink some water, calm herself down. Um, and so I was able to distract her with Encanto from Disney. And then she did calm down and I didn't feel like I was, you know, we, we, we had some sips and we were able to calm down or whatever, but she didn't sleep. She did not sleep. I will, I went to bed at four o'clock in the morning when I got into bed, I told Eric, like, I can't, I can't stay up any longer. You're up. She ended up getting up again at like quarter after five. And then, so he was up with her. Um, so it was just miserable. And that's pretty much how the week is gone. So on Monday, I called her pediatrician and they said, uh, it's probably hand, mouth, and foot is what they told me. Hand, foot, and mouth, hand, foot, and mouth. And so apparently it is extraordinarily painful um, that those blisters are also like in, can be inside their mouth and in the back of their throat. So she hasn't really wanted to eat. She's been uh, understandably very irritable um, and not sleeping great. So now we're on day five. Hopefully we're on the other end of it, but that is where I have been. So I have still been creating, but it just seemed like every time I got something made, it was too late in the day to post a video. And then the next day would come and there would be something else to work on and I never got back to it. So I have like a ton, <laughs> I have a ton of videos that are backlogged now. Um, and like I said, the only reason I'm able to get this one done is because, um, my sister came over. So in addition to her having 
um, hand, foot, and mouth. My parents are out of town in Vegas, and Eric's mom was going to step in to kind of help out where my mom would normally help out. So she was going to do double duty because normally she helps us out anyway. Um, because my husband has um, a couple of days this week where he has to stay for overtime. It's not. Um, it's it's mandatory. He has to stay, and um, so she was going to come out, but then she ended up with pink eye over the weekend, so she couldn't help over the weekend. And then uh, today she was going to come out, but she sent us a text message that she had to go to the urgent care and she ends up having a double ear infection. So I'm very blessed to have my village, but my village is falling apart. <laughs> so not only is my kid falling apart, my village is falling apart. Um, so yeah, it's just been, it's been a wild ride this week. Plus, before that, I had some projects to work on for some companies that um, don't require a video. Uh, it's it's a different kind of process. Um, so yeah, just a lot. A lot of things that have kept me from the videos, but hopefully we're back in a good swing of things. Now, please pray for me that this baby can continue to have some relief and to feel better. Um, so yeah, that's that. So you saw me heat emboss the sentiment, smack it on there. I added some glitters and then these clear little embellishments. Super cute. Um, and that's it. That's the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you so much for your concern. Genuinely appreciate you. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.